At GMBN Tech, we absolutely love making useful and informative videos to help you all understand and work on your bikes. Now, in the last year, we've made a lot of videos that do exactly that, and as well as a basic toolkit, there's always a bunch of additional spare parts and components that you're gonna need to do these jobs. Now, what you see here is just a selection of stuff that I like to use on a pretty much a weekly basis working on my own bikes. And it's stuff, in fact, that's been in at least 15 videos over the last year on GMBN and GMBN Tech. So I'm gonna take you through this stuff and show you why it's a good idea to consider having some of this in your own toolkits at home. Okay, so firstly, if you set your tires up tubeless, it's a good idea to keep a bit of a stock of some tubeless sealant. Now, if possible, always try and use the same one that's in your tires already. Try and avoid mix and matching. Now, you can do this with some, but others you just cannot mix and they're curved and you get really bad effect. So stick with what you have in your tires. Now, as far as repairing punctures themselves go, you're gonna need to keep some spare inner tubes and all the conventional sort of stuff, but I actually like to go one step further. And I keep some rubber patching here, which is really handy for repairing slashes in tires. Now, you can actually repair a tire really solidly, and I've made a video on what to do. That's gonna be in the link below this very video. Alternatively, you can get yourself some industrial patch kits, which are a bit more suitable for things like ATV inner tubes and tires and stuff. Now, they're dead cheap when you get these on eBay. They come in a big pack and get yourself some really good industrial vulcanizing solution. Now, with any tubeless system, if you do have one on your bike, from time to time, you will need to replace the tapes. It does deteriorate. Personally, I really like to use Gorilla Tape. This stuff you can get from any sort of hardware store. It's actually really useful in a whole number of ways around your bike as well, so always useful to keep some. Now, if you've ever had any sort of inner tubes, you basically had to get rid of them and recycle them, try and keep the valve cores from them. They're usually removable. If so, definitely keep them as spare parts. And it's also well worth having a couple of extra valve cores and valve stems laying around the place because they will come in handy from time to time. You can bend and damage them. And basically this does tend to happen just before you wanna go riding. So keeping a spare is always a good idea. And lastly, there's tubeless tire repair. Now these things are a really good idea. You get these rubber plugs, you get them in various different sizes and thicknesses, and you literally stab them into the hole in the tire, pull out the, the fork that you stab them in with, and it leaves the rubber part in there. You then want to slice off the top, and basically you're going to be able to ride home. But when you get home, you want to keep a supply, like I said, of vulcanizing solution, and you can do a bit more of a complete job to continue riding that tire. And there's also a whole bunch of options, a bit more suitable for taking with you when you ride. This particular one's by Dynaplug, comes preloaded, stab them into your tire, fix the tire, get going, put a fresh one in when you get home. Okay, there's the samurai swords that go into end of your handlebars. They're really, really useful. If you ride and you race in demanding conditions, you're quite tough on your bike, well worth investing in something like that. Next up is often overlooked tools. Now, as well as your basic toolkit, you will need some other specifics that we always refer to. In particular, this one will save you money. This is a chain checker, and this is just the basic one. In a lot of videos on GMBN Tech, I show you the slightly more advanced tool. This is out of my own personal toolkit. I have the cheaper one. It does the job equally as well. It's just got less features on it. Pop it into the chain, and it tells you when you need to replace your chain. It's that simple. Next up, a decent multi-tool. Now, there's two real types to these. There's the sort of thing you're gonna use in a workshop environment, and something you're gonna use out on a trail. Now, if you're at home working on a bike, really you want a full-size multi-tool, something like this. Now, I've had this literally for probably 15 years, maybe longer now. The color's even different to the one you can buy now by Park Tools. It's old faithful. It stays in my workshop apron. It's used on a daily basis. It's absolutely fantastic. It's decent quality, and it does most things I need on a bike. However, if you're more focused on something you can take out to the trails, get yourself a quality trail focused multi-tool. Now, of course, it's always a compromise because the Allen keys themselves are far shorter with less leverage than the sort of home style kit. However, they always have secret weapons like chain tools up their sleeves. And this particular one has a set of twin jaws on it. This has got just about everything on it to get me out of trouble. It comes with a little rubber band around it, which means it's gonna be nice and silent when it's in your pocket or in your bag. And actually, this particular one, it's a Topeak Mini 18, I think, actually fits inside a little compartment on the bottom of a bottle cage. So actually, that is super useful for me. A general purpose spoke key. A generic one that will fit most options out there is exactly what you need. Keep one in your toolkit because at some point you will have loose spokes. It does mean you have to look after your wheels a bit more. 
Now, a lot of people will tell you you need torque wrenches for everything on a bike. It's recommended, but you don't need them. You can actually use your sort of your own internal calibration to, to master it. But I actually favor using one of these. Now, this is an older design now. They have revised this. It's called the ATD1. It comes with various different bits in a handle and you can set different torque settings. Now, I use this in places with delicate bolts like handlebar stem clamp bolts and things like that, especially when using carbon bars or anything you can risk cracking or damaging. Now, perhaps you might not want something like this that I use on a daily basis in the workshop. You want something that's a bit more versatile that's quite big for lugging around now Topeak make this mobile version it comes with a little mini ratchet and you've got these little bits here it's really cool and this actually stays inside my traveling bag and I think Blake and Neil have got these in their bike bags as well for going on trips and it's a really good idea to have something like that now of course that one would be suitable for use at home as well so it does depend on the situation you have and what your finances allow now something I always like to have in my toolkit and my selection is some sort of quality little knife uh, this one's just a little bench made knife um, very cool, very handy for very specific jobs. There's a whole bunch of things that this is useful for in addition to having regular cutters. Next up, just some completely random bits and pieces that will always come in handy. First up is something that I speak about often on GMBN Tech, it's the Scotch Mastic 3M rubber tape. This stuff is amazing. It comes in 25 and 50 mil thicknesses. It sticks to most things on a bike. You can use it to make chainstay protectors. You can use it to put around your brake levers to give yourself more traction. You can use it to silence things. It's just really useful stuff to have. It's quite expensive, so get a roll and you can share this around with your friends. You don't need it that often, but it's really useful. Next up, get yourself a roll of electrical tape. You can use this for measuring things. You can use this to make sure you don't rub anything. You can use it in place of cable ties if you're out. Just good general purpose stuff to have. And as always, everyone needs more cable ties because they do solve a lot of problems. And when most things won't work, cable ties, boom. Job done. Uh, next up, some heat shrink. Really useful for binding things together, in particular, messy cables. We all have a lot of cables at the front of our bikes and you can put two into one space. Keep some spokes, obviously the same lengths that you have on your wheels of your bike. Uh, always worth asking a mechanic if you don't know how to measure that yourself. Quite an easy process, get some spares, keep them. Time to time you're gonna snap a spoke and it's quite easy to replace them. We've got a video on that too. Now this one I like. Some of you all know what this is, it's Moto Foam. So it's essentially a foam that is non-absorbent and it's used primarily for stuffing in places, obviously not in a big lump like this, stuffing in places so you don't want mud or anything like that to gather. See a lot of races and World Cup mechanics use this stuff on downhill bikes where they've got big gaping holes where mud can gather, get in the way and create damage and stuff. And more importantly, waste time in cleaning the bikes. Good stuff to have, dirt cheap to get that on eBay and places like that, always worth having. Next up, these little anodized red little fellas. So they typically come with a RockShox reverb seat post and their primary function is so you can use an existing internal cable to pull through your reverb cable. But that means you can use it on any internal cable on a bike. So you can use it to pull through outer hosing, you can use it for brake lines, whatever you want, just a really useful little widget to have. Uh, next up, always a good idea to keep some spare inner cables and some an electric outer cable. You can buy these in rolls, you can buy it in specific sections for a bike. Well worth keeping some, along with a supply of nipple end caps and cable ferrules and stuff like that. It does mean that when your bike does gunk up and your shifting does suffer, you can just change it. You don't have to go anywhere, you've got a supply at home. Bleed blocks. Obviously, they are useful for when you're bleeding your brakes but this particular style of design are really useful for when you're traveling without your bike. If you move wheels from your bike, wedge these in between your brake pads and no more accidental piston moving. Really, really handy to keep. And last up, you might want to consider some stuff to repair some of your technical riding clothes with. If you've got an expensive waterproof jacket, from time to time, you might find some of the seams on the inside come undone. You get seam repair tape, really, really useful stuff. And more importantly, if you manage to tear a jacket, sometimes you can think it's a bit of a write-off, but you can get different colored Gore-Tex patches online that stick on, basically. They do the same job as the fabric does in the first place. There's various options available for different fabrics and, of course, different colors. Really, really useful, especially if you're gonna be on the road a lot, because sooner or later, you will tear a hole in that jacket.
Now lastly, lubricants and greases. Now of course, depending on your mechanical level, uh, what you're comfortable doing on a bike, it does depend on what you're gonna actually have and need. At the very least, you're gonna need some chain lube. At the most, you might need something a bit more like what I have here. Now with this little selection, I can bleed my brakes, I can service my fork, I can service my shock, I can clean my bike, I can lubricate my transmission, and I can grease anything appropriately on a bike. So just very quickly, gonna take you through some of this stuff. So first up, you're gonna need some chain loop of some kind. Now I always recommend to try and avoid a spray if you can. They're very tempting because they're nice and easy to spray on but it does mean you can accidentally spray other parts of your bike like your brakes. This stuff does mean you're going to use less but it does take a little bit longer to lube in the first place. There's lots of options available on the market. I always prefer a dry lube even in winter because I do like the way it tends to keep things a bit cleaner and with the amount of maintenance I do on my bike it's not a problem for me. However, wet lube might be better for you. Next up, you're gonna need some sort of degreaser or chain cleaner because things do get gunky from time to time. Now, I try and avoid using this stuff as much as possible and save it for the really, really nasty jobs because it is kind of pricey, but it cuts through like nothing else. It's really, really good. So do your research, get the one that suits your bike the best and use it wisely. Next up is a really good idea if you're confident in having a bleed kit that suits your brakes. Uh, in particular, on my bike I've got Shimano XT which uses mineral fluid, so I've got some mineral fluid. If your brakes have dot fluid, try and keep the minimum amount you can because if you keep it for a long time, it can ingest moisture in there and effectively it's not gonna do its job properly. So if you've got mineral fluid, you can keep this on a shelf for quite a long time, whereas dot fluid, far less. So keep a small amount, just to recap. We've got this really cool machined one by a GMBN fan, so a little bit different to the regular funnel out there, but that's a kit for Shimano brakes, so all good. Just make sure you get the right kit for your brakes. Get yourself a bottle of Threadlock. There's no need to have something high strength, just medium strength will do. And make sure you use it on the suitable bolts. If you have multiple chain rings, or even if you've got chain ring and a spider set up on your bike that involves chain ring bolts, make sure you get some of this on because they will rattle loose at some point. Also, it's a good idea to have it on other areas of the bike. You can go to town on this stuff, so you might want to get yourself a couple of bottles. Really useful stuff to have. And an all-purpose grease is really handy to have. Now, we often refer to carbon gripper compounds, assembly compounds, and now it's quite tricky because there's a lot of options available, but the most important thing is an all-purpose grease that you can use on bearings, on pedal threads, on your headset, a whole number of things. This particular one is carbon safe, so I know that I can use this on virtually any bike in any location. Now for both the seals in a shock and the seals on a fork, you're gonna need a proper dedicated suspension grease, something that's not harmful to the rubber and has been developed to be thin enough for that purpose. So this particular one is by SRAM, but there's lots of options out there on the market. So get yourself a good grease. You, it's quite sparing. You don't actually need to use that much and that will do several more services. And in addition to that, some float fluid. This stuff is really good. Comes in handy little pouches so you don't waste too much. Well worth investing in some of that. Here is just a generic fork oil. You can get spray on silicon oil as well. This is suitable for using just under the seals if you just wanna poke a bit under there just to make them feel a little bit better. Bit of a refresh. You're gonna need some sort of heavy duty lube for the lower legs, which is just a lubricating oil. It's nothing to do with a damper. This particular one is a 20 weight oil and this is from Whistler Performance Lubes, but there's plenty available on the market from Fox and loads of other oil manufacturers. And the very last thing is a water displacer. So I always use WD-40, I've had this stuff for years. Good for a number of purposes. You can actually get away with using it as a lube in extreme cases, but it's also a solvent as well, so it can remove lube and greases from some parts of the bike. So be careful how you use it, but it can be man's best friend. It's just really useful all round stuff to have. So there we go, that's just some of the kit I keep alongside my tools that's super useful for a whole number of jobs. Uh, I'm sure there's gonna be some of this stuff that's useful for you. I'd love to know what is useful and what isn't useful and stuff that you might not have even known about. Uh, let us know in those comments below. For a couple of useful videos, click down here if you want to see how to repair a tire slash and click over here if you want to do a fork lower leg service. As always, give us a huge thumbs up if you love what we're doing here at GMBN Tech and if you've got any suggestions, let us know that as well and uh, click that subscribe button. Cheers guys.